What's up, everybody? TradingView just came out with a new version of PineScript version 6. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the new changes and what to expect, how to migrate, and basically not to worry because right now there's no breaking changes. So let's jump right into it. Hey everyone, my name is Paul Mendes. I've been programming PineScript since 2015. So let's talk about the newest version of PineScript. So if you open up the Pine editor, previously the new scripts would be over here and now they're over here. So if you wanna create a new script, you're gonna come over to create new, this little arrow here and create a new indicator, all right? That took me a little bit of time to figure out, so I'm saving you some time now. So all your stuff is gonna be on the left side. Now, all the new scripts you make are gonna be version six automatically. If you wanna change it to version five and so forth, that's how you do that. The changes, however, are very minor, but there's one huge change and that's the request security change. And they had just implemented this in a V5, but for V6, it's default. And what I'm talking about is dynamic request to security calls. It's going to allow us to create requests inside of conditional blocks. We can export request security calls from libraries and put them in for loops. If you've never used a request, this is a function that's going to allow you to grab data from different time frames and different assets. Okay, so this is a very powerful function that everyone uses at one point or another, and it has a lot of confusion and mystery surrounded around it, but now it's become a lot more powerful. So you can see here in this example, I've created a little script that takes a array of strings, specifically this is exchanges, and it's going to cycle through all of the big exchanges for crypto. And then it's going to grab the current asset I'm on and it's going to grab the volume. And then it's going to give me the combined total volume for all of those exchanges on the current asset I'm on. All right. So you can see down here in the sub pane here, I have the, the cumulative volume. And on top, I have the regular volume indicator. But if you've ever worked with volume, you would know that it's only going to show you the volume of the asset that you're currently looking at. So if I open up the data window over here, you can compare the, the top volume, which is this indicator, the built-in trading view one. And you can see that it's showing me 10.75K volume. But the bottom one is at 301K. So it's giving me all of the volume for all of those exchanges that I grabbed. So this is a huge change. It's called dynamic requests. And you can actually turn it off up here in the indicator parameters dynamic request by default it's always going to be true they just added this to version 5 silently that by default is always going to be false on here it's always going to be true and if you don't use it it'll turn off automatically on the back end so you won't use extra resources which is cool so this is just an array of strings that i just added of all of the exchanges okay it stores it in this exchanges array and then down here i'm looping through that array and i'm concatenating the exchange plus the ticker i'm on and I'm sending it to the request function here. And if there's any exchanges that, uh, that don't exist, it just ignores the invalid symbol, returns that data, pushes it into a variable so I can hold all the data here, and then that's where I'm displaying it, okay? Very cool feature. The rest of the upgrades aren't as cool, but they're worth knowing. So the next change I wanna talk about is the integer and float values are no longer implicitly cast to bool. What that means is you might see something like this in some version five and previous scripts where people will use the TA change function to check if a certain float value has changed, has increased or decreased. And they'll use that in a ternary operator because previously a zero would always be false and anything positive would always be true. It's no longer like that. You have to explicitly cast any changes like that to a bool using the bool wrapper, okay? The other change is booleans can no longer be cast to NA. So you might like to start your variables off like this. You set it to bool, and then you give your variable name here, and you set it to NA. You can't do that anymore. Nothing too crazy there. And a, a performance enhancement they made was the AND and OR conditions are now evaluated lazily. And I always thought they did this anyways, but I guess not. So what this means is if you have some kind of if condition, say we have if the RSI is greater than 80, which is this condition, right? And the close is greater than the open. Let's say we do that, okay? 
Well, if this condition is false, then it's not going to even bother evaluating this part. So that'll save some resources. If you put the easy conditions up front on the left and put the more computational conditions over to the right. So if you had something like this, where you put the RSI over here, okay, and RSI is less than 30, and let's say this condition was false, this will never get computed, and this needs to get computed on every single cycle for it to be accurate. So you should have that removed, otherwise it's not gonna work. Another small change they made was when you divide by two integers, it's actually gonna give you a fraction now. Okay, previously it wasn't like that. And stuff that nobody really did anyway, but they fixed was the history operator can no longer be used with literal values or fields with user-defined types. So I guess I never did this and I've never seen this before, but I guess people were doing something like this where they would grab a value and then you could use the history operator on it. We know that value is not going to change because it's always going to be 10, but you could do that before and now you can't. Another one that no one really did before, the same parameter can't be specified more than once. So if you had a function with multiple parameters, I guess you could have used title twice in previous versions, could have called it like that, and it would have just taken the first one. I don't know why you would do that, but that's no longer going to work. Also, the offset parameter on the plot is no longer going to accept series values. They also made some strategy changes in the V6 upgrade. Finally, they got rid of the when parameter. So if you use a strategy.entry, there was always this parameter here where you could use when, and then that would be your condition. They got rid of that because better out just using an if block, okay, and then sending your strategy entry. Uh, another thing they did was they set the margin percentage for strategies by default to 100. Previously, it was at zero. So now when you make a strategy, if you want to set it back to zero, you're just going to have to go to margin long and set those parameters to zero and margin short, set it to zero. Okay, because by default, they're now 100. And finally, the actual coolest change they made to strategies is the back tester will now allow you to have more than 9,000 orders. Previously, if you went over 9,000 trades, it would shut the strategy off and you wouldn't even be able to see the results. So for a lot of my scripts, I built in uh, limits that would make it stop trading before we hit that 9,000 limit. So at least I could see the performance of that strategy before it threw an error and then just didn't work at all. So they just trim any excessive trades. So now we can literally take a strategy and have like 20,000 trades and it won't matter, which is really cool. Other miscellaneous changes, the NA is no longer supported in place of built-in constants and unique types. So that's another one. If you have the plot function you're using and you maybe had an input to change the style on the plot function, and we know these are unique types, the plot area, like maybe you had a selector that went through all these, and if none were selected, it passed NA, okay, like that. That's, you can't do that anymore, okay? Not really a big deal, but just want to show you everything that's going on. This one's cool. Array functions now accept a negative index. You have an array, and if you want to get the first value in the array, we know we can use dot .get zero and if you want to get the last value now you can use negative one previously we had to get the size of the array by doing this and then subtracting one and that would give us the last index of the array now we don't need to do this extra step we can just pass it in negative one another change with the time frame dot period multiplier so if you use this time frame dot period a lot in your scripts specifically if you're using it with the equal sign maybe it's like equal to one day no longer is that going to work because it's always going to return a multiplier with that. So I'm on the four hour time frame. If I switch to the daily, instead of this showing me D, it's going to show me 1D. So if I go to the two day, it's gonna show me 2D and so forth, okay? Another change which might break some people's scripts is some mutable variables are no longer erroneously marked as const. So what this means is there are some variables that worked in places where they shouldn't have. And specifically, this is the TAEMA. Now in version five, this script would accept a series length. So you could have a dynamic EMA where the length of the EMA was changing based on whatever parameters you have. Okay, now you can't do that. So this is kind of a backwards move where it's breaking some functionality here 
but don't worry, there's still ways to create a dynamic EMA. I have some code for that. If you want it, just send me a message. Finally, they got rid of the transparency parameter. This one was basically, since version three, I think they were deprecating it. So now no longer can you use transp as a parameter. And all this does is it makes the color transparent. So to fix that, you can just use color new, pass your color, and then pass it the transparency. Or you could use any one of the other ways to draw a color with transparency built in. Also, speaking of colors, one of the last changes they did was they changed the default colors. So color red has a different kind of color to it, teal and yellow. And those were all of the changes so far from version five to version six. Nothing really crazy. The biggest thing, like I said, is this request security function. It's now become super powerful and the UI has moved over here. So if you want to upgrade your scripts to version six, all you have to do is just come here and then do convert code to V6 and that should work. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, shoot me a message. I'll see you in the next video.